let's go through the linebackers here briefly, the group that'll play right behind that. And it's everything that I have read and heard indicates that Harold Perkins will back up a level and will play outside linebacker, perhaps even on the inside at linebacker. Now, Madhouse is going to move him around. He's going to do some different things. And certainly in passing situations, he'll he'll do some different things. You saw Harold Perkins get schemed into the boundary or out into uh, into the field at times last year. They'll try to avoid that as much as they can. Uh, but he's going to be a versatile playmaker for this team at linebacker. Outside of that, unless I'm grossly missing um, somebody on the roster, which is very possible. They don't have a current roster on LSUsports.net. And I just went to last year's roster, then to the transfer portal and kind of looked. And if I miss, I'm I'm not too proud for that. Somebody in the Bayou Ford chat, throw it at me if I'm missing significant names. But you've had so many guys transfer out and, and leave at that position that it looks a little thin to me. You've got West Weeks, who is 6'2", 240 pounds. He actually made 28 tackles last year for LSU, which I would not have thought the number was that high. He did make six against Purdue in an absolute blowout in the bowl game. He made five against Southern in a worse blowout than that. So that's 11 of the 28, so almost half, close to half. Um, But he he probably played a little bit more than I thought, and he certainly played some special teams. He's a third-year college player. He can probably help you there. I don't know what they're going to do with Ogi of Huko. Ogi of, wow, that's tough. Ovi Aghufo. I don't know what they're going to do with him. He's mainly been an edge guy, but I think he could play inside backer. That's maybe what Springs for. I, I don't know, um, but that's that's something I'll I'll be interested in. Omar Spates is a guy who's absolutely going to be a big part to what LSU does on defense this year. He was first team All Pac-12 at Oregon uh, last year. Uh, so Oregon State, sorry, last year, 83 tackles for them that led the Beaver defense. So Omar Spates, 6'1", 233. He fits right in the middle of the defense, and I think you work from that with Herrick, with the Harold Perkins, with Wes Weeks, maybe with Akufo, and then Whit Weeks comes in as a, uh, a a linebacker in this group, and we'll see if they can find a spot for him. I don't know that there's a lot more from a numbers perspective at the linebacker spot right now. Now, there's another opening in the transfer portal after spring ball is over. Maybe that's somewhere they look, but I feel like you're a little bit light there. I, I have... I mean, Perkins and Spates are high-level players. Perkins is an All-American player, and Spate is a first-team All-Conference in the P5 last year. So that's a great place to start from. I think once you move away from there and you start to look at depth or additional starters, it gets a little light on numbers for me. And that's, I think, something that I don't know that I was totally aware of as of three, four weeks ago. But as I look at it now, and we kind of get back into looking at football, I do think they're a little bit light at linebacker. Their numbers are great on the defensive front, which I gave you in the last segment. But at linebacker, I'd like to have two or three more. And I think Demario Tolan certainly a guy that they thought of about that spot. And I mean, you had some young players that were figuring to move into really prominent roles in this defense that decided, hey, I'm out of here. And that's just... Part of it. I think LSU is probably more a beneficiary of the transfer portal in this type of situation than they are a, a, a quote unquote loser. But when I start to look at the numbers at linebacker, I'm like, oh. I think maybe the biggest thing I take away is they've got to play Harold Perkins at that level. You don't have enough guys elsewhere to pull him down and play him at edge, which means. You're going to see more of Savion Jones and Braden Swenson and Deshaun Womack and Paris Shan and some of those guys playing and Harold Perkins backing up a little bit. But that's that's one of those things, and I've kind of touched on this time and time again here as we've gone through this little exercise as we get ready for spring ball. That How they use Harold Perkins does fascinate me as a, a non X and O savant. Uh, you're not going to get him, get, you're not going to pull the whiteboard out over here and have me start, you know, Gruden's QB camp. On the on the whiteboard, getting it rolling. That's not that's not where my bread's buttered. But when I see a defensive player move from the edge to playing in the middle of the field, to blitzing in the a gap, to being a slot you know defender that comes down and blitzes, to the the different ways they can use him. And I think what you've got to do as you analyze how that's going to happen is figure out what the other pieces look like around him. And that was kind of 
the emphasis in me going through this entire deal. So you're looking at seven interior defensive linemen, eight edge rushers, four linebackers. Not quite where you want to be on the linebacker perspective, but I think they've got a chance to potentially address that in the end. That's the other thing is like, this is all so new and so different to us as college football fans and, and those of us that cover college football because we understood the calendar so well and when things were going on and, and how impactful they would be year to year. I have no idea how impactful the transfer portal is going to be at the end of the spring. We knew the wild, wild west was coming in January. That was getting for in December. That was going to be a free for all. Guys have just finished their season. People not happy. People have graduated. They got this one time transfer. We're going to go crazy. How much does spring practice, how much energy does it create in the transfer portal? Again, it would surprise me a little bit if it was anything close to what we saw in, in December and January. It would surprise me if it was dead and quiet. But that's what the second signing day was at the beginning of February, dead and quiet. There's not much to it. Maybe that's the same thing. Everybody's going to get their stuff done in January and December from signing day and transfer portal, and then the rest of the spring, they're going to be looking at mainly juniors in high school and how to fill out the next class. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like, but we'll continue to, to check it out, and we'll let you know. Again, LSU spring practice starts up on Thursday just before 8 o'clock. Get 20 minutes to look. We'll have an update on it here on the Hunt Palmer Show coming up on Thursday. Hey, thanks so much for watching the Hunt Palmer Show on YouTube. If you don't mind, throw us a like right below and hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.